All right, so today we'll be taking apart the Olympus Infinity uh, standard point and shoot camera. It does have autofocus, um, and the lens is a 35 millimeter f2.8. Uh, these go on eBay for about 25 bucks, uh, but I found this copy that appears to have a pretty good lens, um, pretty clean lens, at a thrift store for about 50 cents. Uh, we can see that there is a lens element we can see from the back and there is a lens element we can see from the front and we can see from the front that there is a shutter mechanism the combined shutter and aperture mechanism in this case I believe um, that we can see in the middle which means that both the lens elements have to come out and then be remounted both in relation to the film plane both in relation to this film plane and in relation to one another so the absolute image quality of this will be less than, uh, or will most likely be less than uh, some of the ones that have one, uh, one lens component with all the shutter and aperture mechanisms behind the lens. Uh, so there's no between lens alignment that needs to happen. Uh, to take this apart, we're gonna use uh, the standard just iFixit toolkit. Any set of small screwdrivers would do just fine. Uh, but I'm going to use this one as it's what I've used before and it's what I'm comfortable with. First we're going to take off the strap because it's in the way and if you like the strap you can always use it on your new camera. So we can see here that this front element is the autofocus. Okay, we can see that this moves uh, with this assembly right here. So I'm gonna see if I can get this entire assembly out in the hopes that it, uh, Never mind. it does not make the back element move at all. Pulling this in and out, that back element is stationary uh, and is not part of this movement. So the autofocus in the ca this camera was done with this front element and the back remained, mo remained motionless. Unfortunately, when we switch it to manual focus, we'll be moving the entire group together. Uh, but we can hope that it still focuses correctly. Um, so I'm going to now go ahead and break that piece out. I'm actually going to get a pair of lens spanners and see if I can unscrew this component. All right. This is a pair of lens, span, uh, lens spanners. You have uh, these flatheads on one side and you have these um, spiky looking bits on the other. Uh, but these are very, very helpful when you need to get out a lens element like this. You simply set them into their grooves, tighten up all of the screws, and then very gently spin that lens out. I try to switch to using my fingers as quickly as possible uh, just because having sharp metal pointy things near glass freaks me out. So this element here will not come out uh, just by unscrewing it. So what I'm going to do is try to trim around the edges uh, of the holder and then we'll see if we can get it out. So I brought two, player, two pairs of wire cutters to see if we can just trim this excess plastic off and get into it. So that seems to have worked. There's my bare element right there. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get this little holder out 
because that's a nice carriage for this lens element. Yep, so that has brought this lens element out just fine. Uh, this piece that I thought was screw out looks like it is actually a very simple bayonet that goes in and twists on. Of course, I'm not going to be able to get that to happen right now. Ah, there's one high side. There we go. Uh, this element here, all these little blades, are your shutter and aperture components. Uh, you can see that these are between the two lens elements. We can see the shine of that rearmost lens element through that hole. Uh, we're going to go as far as we can this direction into the camera, and then we'll flip it over and get to the back side if we have to do that. This looks like a middle component. There's actually one more component that came off. We can see a ring of glue right there. This is the center component, and then this mounts, I would guess, onto our front piece with the uh, blades and pieces of the aperture in between those two. So this is our middle piece with this part facing forward and this part facing uh, towards the film plane. Set that to the side. Now we have this one lens element in here that looks like our last lens element of the set. Uh, we're going to pry that guy out. Gently rescue him. And this is our last lens element. We can see the glue here that matches the glue that is in, um, that is on that backmost piece of the element. We can also see an aperture disc of some sort in this lens. Uh, we can, I would assume that that has to do with uh, improving the quality by dropping the light a little bit and fixing the, um, and fixing the light coming in from the edge of the lens, but I have no idea. We are gonna leave it alone though uh, to try to retain the initial properties of the lens. So now we have our three lens elements. We have our rearmost lens element. We have our center lens element. And we have our front lens element, which in the original design, this piece moved to autofocus. These two pieces seemed to uh, remain stationary. So we're going to put those together uh, in their closest fit that I can get them um, and hope that we can get good uh, infinity and close focus out of the set. Uh, we will be mounting it in an old Russian lens tube. Um, this was an M39 lens, which uh, for those of you that do not know, there's a version of, M3, of M39 that has a longer flange distance than the M39 we're used to talking about with Leica and companies like that. This, is, this was one of those such lenses. It had a 40-ish uh, millimeter uh, flange focal distance, which was too long for my interests with mirrorless cameras. But fortunately, the screw is still the same and I was able to get this very nice uh, clean empty tube by removing all the lens elements which will be used in another project uh, at another date and with this I can mount all these components which will fabricate the adapter from these components into this lens and then I will use a standard uh, M39 to M42 adapter screw here so this will just spin on like that now this is M42 then I will use an M42 to E-mount. It's an M42 to E-mount adapter, and it's one millimeter thick, so it adds one millimeter to whatever our flange distance is. I'm gonna screw that guy on. Now we have all of the basic mechanism of our lens. Okay, for this portion, we are going to um, take our two components, which is our front lens element, which was again the autofocus one. And then we're going to take our rear lens element, uh, which is actually this rear component uh, stuck back onto the mid-level the mid-level component. Uh, just as a note, it appears that this element and this element are glass. It does appear that this last uh, large element in the rear is plastic. Uh, so be very, very careful with touching it. Uh, also be careful that the gloves you're using for putting the epoxy on or whatever adhesive you want to use are completely clean as you really don't want to get anything on this surface or even more importantly the inside surface of these two as when we glue these together that will be the last time we see either the surfaces the last time we can get to them um, 
So again, clean gloves, clean components, a uh, fresh thing of epoxy. Uh, there will be some light leak in the side, but that will hopefully be uh, taken over by the black printed components that we'll use to hold these two pieces together. If you're worried about that, uh, there are mix-ins for epoxy that make them a darker color. Uh, you can also get putties and other things like that. Uh, this is just the translucent, apparently it says translucent yellow uh, Loctite epoxy. Uh, I have more surface area here than I do on this component. Uh, so I'm going to be applying my glue here. Uh, I can, however, see that this component is smaller than this one. So I'm going to measure out to this edge and then that's where I'm going to apply my glue right here. These clicking components look like they are at exactly the right distance from center. So I'm going to use these components and not worry about, me and not worry about measuring. Um, I'm gonna just gonna use those three as the, uh, as the positioning for my glue. Uh, it's always better in this case to go wide than tight because if you get a little bit of adhesive run, um, it'll go to the outside and not end up on your lens element. There's glue oozing out the sides, which is fine because there's no glue oozing into the middle. If I had glue oozing into the middle, I would have wasted a lens and had to uh, restart this project. Uh, one thing just as a note, I usually try to leave a little bit of the epoxy that I used off to the side So when I come back, I can put my fingernail into it and see how um, How set up it is uh, So if it's particularly cold or particularly hot, you can you can tell if you've got a good setup on your epoxy One thing uh, I have a few different sizes of wire cutters Everything from little teensy ones to middle to uh, big full-size electricians cutters uh, the other tools that I've gathered for this stage is just a razor knife, a simple razor knife with a fresh knife or with a fresh blade in it, um, nice and sharp to get those last little bits out. Um, and I have a piece of just rough 80 grit sandpaper. I'm not making anything perfect with this, it's just to take off anything that might be an issue uh, for later on. But this is a uh, method of last resort. Let's try it with these guys first. Let's see, this looks like I can indeed center this element in here. However, it's going to be very, very tight on each edge. So I am going to um, cut this down a little bit for, for a little bit further and make sure I have the wiggle room to get this centered. Because remember, we're centering it on these two circles, not on this uh, just messed up randomly cut piece in the middle. We do not want to center on this. It is not centered. It's not, um, it's not symmetric, it's not anything. We want to ignore it as much as possible. We want to center on these two circles. All right, so that is the lens. Uh, I've left a little bit of this tab, and the reason I haven't just shaved it all the way smooth is that this plastic is what's, is what's making our alignment uh, between this front and rear part and it's where and it's where we glued. So if we removed all of this uh, We would most likely actually separate these these elements from one another and we don't want to do that um, So I'm going to stop there and leave us a little bit of a flange and we'll just essentially come out around that when we uh, Fabricate the final piece. So the final um, housing for this will hold tight to here then it will bounce outwards, come out around this, drop back in, attach here as well, and then hopefully cup the end of uh, this element um, so it doesn't fall off into the camera, and so it grabs it nice and tight.
So this is all the pieces that I need. Again, there is going to be all the geometry between this and this component here. But uh, for now, this is the outside edge, that's that. And this is the inside edge, that's this component right here. So here we have our uh, focus mechanism with all of our attachments to the camera. We have our lens element that we've modified from before. Uh, and then we have the four pieces that were 3D printed in order to mount that into that at the correct depth. This is the second, ver this is the second version of this, uh, the first version. Uh, didn't set the, the lens element quite right, it was a little too tight, so I went through and I redesigned some things um, because the first one was just based off those measurements that we made before. But this one uh, fits a little tighter. Uh, I overprint everything very slightly to fit tight and then shave it back out because I would rather have a tight fit than a loose fit that can cause decentering issues over time. So let's go through putting this together. I have a preheated uh, temperature controlled soldering iron here that is set on a relatively low temperature so it doesn't scorch the plastic uh, because I will be using that to weld the PLA plastic together. This is a PLA 3D printer plastic, it is not ABS. Uh, you could use either one, it doesn't matter. You do want to use black, anything but black will cause some very strange uh, light reflection within, within your lens. Uh, be aware that this is shiny, you can probably see a little bit of the shine in this plastic. And that shine does mean that there will be a slightly more reflections inside the lens than you would normally get in a, a standard lens and body combination. So you will get a little bit more aberrant light in there than you would otherwise. But from what I've found, it's just fine. I don't mess with it. I don't try to mat it or black it or do anything like that. I, I just leave it alone. Um, we can also see some other edits that I've had to make, like this uh, pie-shaped cutout of this section here. And that is to account for these two little knobs on this one side. And that was something that I just didn't notice when I was measuring. And so I accounted for that in this secondary print. Uh, this simply slides in. And this clear piece of plastic aligns with the back of this black piece here. That's how we know our alignment is good. Then this is the front piece. This simply slides over the um, black plastic from the original lens, this, this uh, stepped hood section. Uh, I think it's a lens ring actually is the correct term. So I'm going to slide those together. Now, to get these to attach, all I'm going to do is run the soldering iron along the seam. So now we have a few more components here, and these additional components uh, essentially stem from the fact that we have a complicated ob ob object inside it here, i.e. this flange sits on front and keeps the lens from moving forward. Uh, the the piece inside here will keep it from moving backwards to a certain extent, but remember that was all a rough measure. So the exact me measure is this back piece of plastic here to this back of the printed section. And once that's aligned, which it feels like it is right now, I'm gonna take this ring, which simply sits around the lens, sits around that lens element. Now this is a case in which I do need to make sure my alignment is good so I'm going to tap a weld on this side. I'm going to tap a weld around the other side. Now these are the equivalent of just doing uh, tack welds if you were actually welding something. Do a little tack weld over here. Check, make sure my alignment feels right, looks right, me uh, me uh, measures correctly if you want to be that precise about it. Uh, but just be aware that nothing in this process is that precise. Uh, if you're seriously concerned about decentering and off axis issues and um, the lens not being perfectly level with the film plane, this is not a project for you. You could probably do it far more precisely than I am, but there's no fun in that. We want to go out and take pictures. There's a section over here where this uh, pie cut out to, to fit these um, little messed up pieces inside this lens. Uh, you would have a light leak out this side, except for the fact that the way this fits together, it will block it with this next piece. 
All right, so this piece sleeves over this section here. As you can see, it doesn't fit quite right. Uh, this will be the backstop on this section of the lens that fits in nice and tight right there. Uh, and the rest of the lens will shove right through there. Um, I am going to have to uh, ream this out, out a little bit. Um, so I've already done it a little, but uh, that, that well brought this up very slight, slightly. So I'm gonna keep digging this out. You can use a few tools for this. A knife like this is great. It's a little more precise, a little sharper. Um, but I found that it doesn't do the insides of objects very well. I found that the, the thick roundness of just a very sharp part of a very sharp pocket knife uh, does a better internal shave. Still a little bit too tight for my taste, but um, I've shaved off as much of this as I really feel comfortable doing. So now what I'm going to do is come back here and see if I can get a little bit of this excess material off with some sandpaper. All right, now with that sanded, it feels like I can force fit that on, but of course I don't want to do it until it's in there because I want to break these components getting them off. Uh, these are not built to the same grade that a standard lens would be built to, of course. Uh, these are all very relatively fragile plastic. Uh, some of these 3D printed sections are about a millimeter and a half thick. This vertical section here is only about a millimeter and a half thick, and that makes for an incredibly weak print. Uh, that being said, this will be just fine because there's no load on this. This lens weighs almost nothing. Uh, it's never going to be struck against another object. Um, and it will see a relatively easy life. Uh, so this component here slides in just like that, nice and flush with the surface there. Then what I'm going to do is take my rear component. So now these two components are force-fitted over one another. This round ring is holding onto the back of that section that's in here. Uh, and this little ring, you can see a tiny step ring right there. That is where I will run the weld to hold this back stopper onto the rest of the lens element. Um, if I wanted to take this apart, I could either cut or grind that little weld out um, and then pull the whole lens out, for, uh, out the front just like we put it in. So there we have it. We have our finished lens, looks pretty good. It's not perfect, of course, but um, if you wanted to, you could, of course, go in and finish all of these components, but honestly, for me, they are um, functional devices or for utility, not necessarily for aesthetics. So we can see that the focus screw still works just fine. We are also not extending any material back into where it could uh, compete with the shutter. Uh, that's a very, very important thing to do. You really, really want to avoid um, getting anything inside this flange because that's where, if you extend the lens element back there, you will break your, cam your camera. All right, so after this, there should be some, sa some sample shots with this lens, and I hope you enjoyed.